So picture it. I'm at this bride with friends um, and one of them, we'll call her friend. She has a daughter named Sarah and her friend is a social justice activist. And her daughter Sarah is a fierce ally of the LGBTI plus community. She's also kind of on the spectrum herself. And one day Sarah said to her mom, I'm going to tell you something, but you can't tell anybody I told you. What she told her mom was that she has this friend named Blue. Blue is very young and Blue is transgender and Blue is thinking about transitioning. She's thinking of going into the gender reassignment process. And Sarah said, slow down, don't do this, it's too quick, you're moving too quickly. And she, Blue later agreed with, with, with her friend that yeah, she was actually moving too fast. But the reason she's telling her mom the story is she's spotting a pattern where all of these young kids feel compelled to make huge life choices about their gender, about their sex, about their bodies, even though the part that, or the part of the brain that anticipates consequences and is not fully formed until you're around 25 years old. Who's pushing kids to make these decisions? When I first heard people from outside the LGBTI plus movement saying things like, Big Pharma is making money off of transgender kids, making them figure out their gender and sex very early. And my first response was, yeah, that sounds like an American issue or a very upper middle class issue in South Africa, or maybe just a conspiracy theory by transphobes and homophobes. Because you think about it, most LGBTI plus kids on this continent, they're still scared for their lives. Lack of access to affirming interventions for LGBTI plus people is, that, is, is such a huge problem that fixating on how some people abuse that problem, it just feels inappropriate. And so I dismissed these stories, but when I started hearing them in my own friend circle, when I started hearing about how they were interfering with access in public hospitals, I realized that even in South Africa, the legitimacy of the LGBTI plus movement is at risk. And so in this discussion, we're going to talk about how the abuse of rights, of privileges, can undermine the legitimacy of a movement. This is especially the case when the abuse of rights and of privileges is associated with being wealthy. It's associated with being upwardly mobile. It's associated with being part of the bourgeoisie. It makes it seem like the rights we are fighting for are not basic human rights. They are nice life problems. Why am I interested in the way these movements are perceived? Well, my name is Sia Kumalo. I'm Christian. I'm gay. I am also a social political commentator, which means I have conversations with people to prepare them for conversations about an increasingly complicated world. And what you're hopefully going to get in this course is you're going to get equipped to also be a strong participant in those conversations so that you can navigate the complexity of the world.